Welcome to Resurrection Church. We love that you're here, and we believe you have found yourself in a special place. Resurrection Church exists to see lives transformed by the love of God through the power of the gospel. That means that everything we do is designed to lead you one step deeper in your relationship with Jesus. So how do we do that? Well, every Sunday starts with a live, authentic worship. It's a good idea to plan on getting to church a few minutes early so you can grab a cup of coffee in our lobby and pick your favorite seat. After worship, we usually take a minute to greet our neighbors. But don't worry if you're not a hugger. A handshake will do. Then we'll hear a message from the Bible. Our pastors are committed to preaching the truth in love. They'll help us connect the Bible with our everyday lives. After the message, we get to sing one last song together before we wrap up. But don't feel like you've got to run out the door as soon as it's over. We usually spend a few minutes just to hang out. Just like a family should. But that's not all we do. We have men's groups and women's groups. And small groups and classes. And you can join a team to help us serve our community. There's a lot to like about Resurrection Church, but it's hard to tell you all about it. Some of it you just have to experience for yourself. So welcome to Resurrection Church. We love it here. And we think you will too. Good morning, Resurrection. Uh, we're so happy to uh, virtually be with you. It's always so weird coming in here uh, and singing with an empty church, but we are so grateful that you'll be singing along with us. So please join us in worship. There is a light that burns in the darkness. There is a hope that washes the fear away. There is a peace that settles around us It is your love that sets our hearts ablaze Father, we're on our knees With every heartbeat we bring you this offering Lord, come and fill this place Father, we're crying out, Spirit, we need you now, glorious love surrounds us, Lord, come and fill this place. There is a King that reigns in victory. mercy strong enough to say we feel it rising up from the ashes there is a love that overcame the grave there is a love that overcame the grave Father we I will worship you. I will worship. 
family, I know it can be so hard right now to sing that I will worship you always. But because, because our God is so good, because he is sovereign over everything, we can worship him. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what is going on in our world today, we can still worship him. And so uh, in the lowest valley, we'll worship him. In the highest high, we're gonna worship him. And so uh, these next two songs, I just, I just want that to be your cry. I want that to be your prayer, that no matter what, you're gonna worship him. And you won't seek comfort in anything other than the goodness of the Father. fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same god who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes i will lift you high in the lowest valley yes i will bless your name I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days. Oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of our names. And nothing can stand against and I choose to praise, to glorify and glorify the name of our names. Nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify and glorify the name of our names. And nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise. Glorify, glorify the name of our names, and nothing can stand against. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy.
burden too long on my own I wasn't created to bear it alone I hear your invitation to let it all go and I see so grateful that when we run to you, you're standing there with open arms. And so, Father, I pray that that's what we'll do even now with everything that's going on, all of this craziness with uh, the virus. I pray that we will run to your arms, that we will seek you because we know that there is comfort in you that cannot be found anywhere else. Lord, Help us to fix our eyes on you in this time. We're so grateful 
for, for the love that you give us, that when we run to you, you're there and you say, it's safe here. Don't worry. I'm bearing your burdens with you. We're just so grateful for that. And so we say that it's so good to run to you, our Father. And all God's people say, amen. Hey, family, uh, it is during this time where we have the opportunity to give back to God what he has given to us. And I just want to say thank you so much for your faithfulness. Uh, I know that God is pleased when we are faithful, and so thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, as a church, we understand the times that, that we are in, and, and please rest assured that we are aggressively looking for ways that we can be a blessing uh, and, uh, with our resources uh, to the community around us. And so I uh, just want to say thank you, church, for your faithfulness to God uh, as you give out of obedience to him. Let me pray for this time. God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And Father, that is the reason why we give. We give out of obedience to you, Lord. And we pray, God, that as, as we give, uh, that, that as your church, Lord, we are able to, to show, uh, God, the world around us uh, your love. Father, it is um, as believers, that is who we are. We give. And so I pray that you would use these resources, uh, Father, to build your kingdom. Lord, we love you. We trust you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Rez family. Today I'm going to show you how to do two things. The first of which is opening the new Our Kids materials, both uh, the sermon uh coloring project as well as sermon notes so you are going to go ahead and open your browser in the search bar go ahead and type reschurch.net once that loads you're going to go to the top of the page click kids and students just scroll over it and click our kids sermon pdf and that will bring you to the our kids sermon notes where you can download them in the top right corner or print them out then if you would like to access the sermon coloring uh, as well as memory verse, then you click on our kids coloring and memory verse. Uh, there's the PDF and you can print it right there or download it right there. Now for this section, I'm going to show you how to do online giving. So uh, you are also going to go ahead and open up your web browser type in reschurch.net uh, once the page loads uh, you're going to at the top go to giving it's on the far right click on giving uh, there are a couple of options of how you can give uh, you can give online uh, you can use the number below to text uh, to pay or you can make your checks um, out to reschurch.net and mail them to the church at, at our Fox Valley address. Click on Give Now for online giving. You can choose your donation frequency. Uh, uh, we'll say one time for right now. Just put in uh, the donation amount. Um, you can choose which fund you would like it to go to. General fund. Put in your first and last name. In this case, I will be the the very famous Nick Jonas. Put in your email where you will get a uh, confirmation email um, once you uh, send in your gift. Uh, you can put in your credit card number. Once you put in your credit card number, you're going to put in the expiration date of your card found on the front and the CVC. Uh, found on the back of, uh, of, of your credit card. Uh, put in the card billing address. Um, and once all of that is in, you will hit Donate Now. Uh, and it'll, it'll take you to a screen that says thank you for your donation. 
uh, and you will get a confirmation email as well. Good morning, Resurrection Church. Uh, excited to get to share some time with you this morning. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, meet me in John chapter 16. We'll spend a little bit of time there today. And just as we're getting started, uh, this morning we find ourselves in part 10. Can you believe it? Part 10 of our series through the Apostles' Creed that we've called This I Believe. Uh, and, and so what we've been doing, and, and we've said this pretty much every week, is we want to use the, the Apostles' Creed as a type of outline that's going to help us unpack truth found in Scripture. We're not preaching the Creed. We're preaching the Word of God. Using the Apostles' Creed as a type of outline to, to recenter ourselves around the essentials of the Christian faith. Uh, because we, we had talked weeks ago about how many Christians, even in the world today, don't believe some of the core essential doctrines of Christianity. And so what we want to do is we just want to remind ourselves that this is what we believe. And so that's what we've titled this series, This I Believe. And, and today we're going to be, like I said, in part 10, walking through the Apostles' Creed. So, so far in the Creed, here's what we've covered. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of the Father Almighty. From whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And our topic for this morning is this statement. I believe in the Holy Spirit. So like I said, we're going to get started in John chapter 16. I'm just going to read you a couple verses in there. It'll be on your screen. But if you've got a Bible nearby, I can't overstate how important I think it is that you familiarize yourself with that Bible, that you get really comfortable with it, and uh, that, you would, that you would get used to uh, using that Bible, get really uh, familiar with it. And so uh, take a moment, turn to John chapter 16, and while you're turning, my big idea for today is going to be this. The closer we walk with the Spirit, the greater peace we will feel in the flesh. The closer we walk with the Spirit, the greater peace we'll feel with the flesh. Now, here's an important thing to point out here. The peace that I'm talking about there is not the absence of trouble. Because the absence of trouble is not peace. Peace is the presence of God in the midst of our trouble. And so, and so what we're being invited into is a daily walk with God, the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about today uh, as a means of not just accessing, but, but what I want to talk with you about is how a, a closer walk with the Holy Spirit will give us greater peace uh, with the flesh. And so, uh, just to set our context for John 16, John chapter 16 comes right at the tail end of what's called the farewell discourse. Uh, now, starting in uh, about John chapter 12, we're going to see uh, in John 12 uh, the, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. John chapter 13, we can read about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples in an upper room. That's where we get uh, kind of the, the, the Last Supper story from. And then in John chapter 14, he begins what's called the farewell discourse. And he's teaching his disciples things that are critically important to them uh, because he's about to go away. And if, and if you've ever been around someone where you're parting ways and you give last words, those are usually words that you want to kind of hang on to. These things are important to remember. And so uh, in John 16, he, he, he's going to unpack for them, or rather in John 15, he's going to unpack for them that the world is going to hate them. Uh, and there's going to be trouble. And so in John chapter 16, where we're going to find ourselves today, Jesus is going to move us quickly from that trouble to a peace, to a comfort uh, that, that, that he's assuring us will be ours. Uh, and so so just kind of the, the flow of the story up to this point, uh, and, 
And again, Jesus is reminding his followers that in the midst of the world, they're going to have trouble, uh, but that in the midst of that trouble, he will send them a helper, a comforter. Because even Jesus knows that the closer we walk with the Holy Spirit, the more peace we will feel in the flesh. And so if you've got your Bible open to John 16, we'll start in verse 7. We'll make our way to verse 15. Uh, John 16, uh, verse 7 reads this way. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you, all that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Before we dive in and unpack this, would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for your word. Your word assures us that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. God, I pray by your spirit that you would give us the strength and the power to hide your word in our hearts today that we might not sin against you. Uh, Lord, in the book of Joshua, you, you, you told us that, that this book should always be in our mouth, that we should meditate on it and seek to do everything that you've told us to do in this book. And so we thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you for the way that it shapes us as individuals and as a people. And today, Lord, we ask by the Holy Spirit that you would be uh, turning on the lights for us in our minds and in our hearts, that you'd be doing that work of illumination, helping us to see the word clearly, to understand it rightly, uh, and, and to be ourselves transformed by the truths found therein. Uh, would you be with us in our homes as we hear the word proclaimed and as we respond with worship? And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I think our focus today is probably going to be to talk uh, about who the Holy Spirit is. And, and, and so the, the real caution that I feel, even right now, is, is I, I feel this thing in my heart where I want to tell you everything, right? Like I just, I, I want to tell you everything about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and so while on one hand, I could try to do that, I'd probably do a pretty poor job, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't know that it would be effective. Because, because there's this old statement, the mind can only contain what the rear end can endure. And so I, I'm just really going to focus in on one of these titles that Jesus gives to the Holy Spirit. And in the text that we just read, uh, you heard Jesus call the Holy Spirit another helper. And so depending on your translation, uh, that, that, that might come off as another comforter, uh, but Jesus calls him here another helper. And, and, and so here's... Here's what I'm saying. Uh, is it just me or do we live in a day and time where, where we, we would take some help if someone was offering it right now, right? Like in, in the midst of social distancing and quarantine and COVID-19 and coronavirus, and is it just me? Or do you feel this too, that, that if someone's offering some help, I'll take it. So normally, normally the offer for help is, is kind of an offensive thing. Like, no, I, I can do this. But right now, Right now, if you're offering help, I'm taking it. Because, because for some of us, it's fear of coronavirus. For others, it's anxiety about our jobs or about kind of our financial health. For, for others of us, we might just be feeling some loneliness from social distancing. And for others of us, it could just be the sheer overwhelming nature of being uh, maybe maybe suddenly a, a teacher and an employee at your work and a homemaker and all of the other hats that you're wearing. And it can just feel uh, like a crushing weight that's too heavy for you to bear, right? Just me? Uh, or, or is this something that, that, that you feel too? Uh, 
And so what I'm saying is if, if there's a helper to be had, I, I want it, right? I, I, I want that helper. Uh, and, and so here's, here's what I'm putting on the table this morning is the helper is available to help. The, 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 the helper is available. We can walk with him. He will walk with us. And the closer we walk with the Spirit, the more peace we will feel, the greater peace we will feel in the flesh. And again, remember that that, that peace isn't the absence of, of trial and junk, but it's the presence of God in the midst of my trials and junk. And, and so the closer we walk with the Spirit, the greater peace we will feel in the flesh. And so that's not to say that that just walking in the Spirit means you don't have to care for your home or your kids or do your job. That's, a, that's not what that's saying. But what that is saying is that those things don't have to cause such a stress, such an anxiety, uh, because when you walk with the Spirit, you have a helper, right? And so that word helper uh, is actually, so I, I, I tell you this all the time, and then I do it, right? And so, so I promise I'm not trying to flex muscle, and I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to undermine your trust that you can read the Bible. You can. But I think that sometimes it's helpful to get into biblical languages because it's going to show us something about how words have developed in ways that, that maybe we don't naturally associate. And so uh, the word helper that gets translated there in John 16 is is this word in Greek, uh, parakletos. So parakletos, and, and we've got a word in English for this. It's paraclete, uh, and, and it's used exclusively to describe the Holy Spirit. But the word in Greek is parakletos. And, uh, and so if, if we look at how other Bible translations will render that word parakletos, uh, the King James Version is going to call that a comforter. The Holman Christian Standard, the HCSB, is going to render that word as a counselor. And the NIV is going to use the word advocate. Now, in most non-biblical contexts, that word parakletos is used to describe a family attorney. So, so it's, it's like a type of counsel, a type of legal counsel, who would work with your family kind of on a, on a consistent retainer. This isn't someone who you only call once. This is someone who you've got ready access to, uh, the family attorney who brings peace and who counsels, who advises, who helps lead and guide. And so I actually, I really like the way that the King James Bible uh, renders it, that word comforter. Uh, but but the, the problem with that word is that the word comforter today actually means something different than it meant when the King James Bible was translated back in 1611 into English. And so, so today, I think when we think of comfort, we think of like warm blankies, right? I, I think about my, my, my soft bed and, and, and we think about the absence of trouble, but that's actually not what comfort meant in 1611, even, even conversationally, not what, it, not what it made people think of in 1611. See, the word comfort comes from the Latin uh, confortis. Uh, and so uh, comfortus in Latin is a compound word, the first word com and the second word fortis. And, and, and so if you speak Spanish, you may already be kind of making some associations about what you think this means because Latin and Spanish is a language that has Latin roots. And so com sounds a lot like our Spanish word con, which means with, right? And, and, that's, and that's what it meant. Com is with and then fortis. Uh, where it's actually the root of the Spanish word fuerte, which means strength. And so, so comfortis, comfort, means with strength. And so, so it, it actually, it doesn't mean plushy pillows. It means strength. What a gift that, that we would have an advocate, a helper who comes alongside to bring strength, to strengthen us in the midst of trying times. Because remember, the closer we walk with the Spirit, the greater peace we'll feel in the flesh. I like the way that the late R.C. Sproul uh, says it. R.C. Sproul says this, The Holy Spirit comes to the people of Christ not to heal their wounds after a battle, but to strengthen them before and during a struggle. The idea is that the church operates not so much as a hospital, but as an army, and the Holy Spirit comes to empower and strengthen Christians to ensure victory. 
See, when, when I walk with the Holy Spirit, he strengthens and empowers me in, in ways that, that make me no longer feel crippled and stuck by the worries of COVID-19. Because, because what he's doing, he's not assuring me that I'll never get sick, right? That's, that's, not, that's not a promise that we'll find in Scripture. And so the, the, the comfort doesn't come from the assurance that I won't get sick, but the comfort comes from the assurance that there's someone who will be with me through it all. The, the comfort comes as my focus is shifted away from the here and now and toward eternal heavenly realities. And so, and so as I shift my focus away from the here and now, I stop living for temporal, temporary pleasures that are all passing away anyway, and I start investing in eternity. And so what that does is my relationship now with the people I work with is no longer about what can I get from you, but it's about how can I move you, nudge you one step closer in your relationship with Jesus. The, the, the different societies and groups and social clubs that I might belong to are now, not, they're, they're no longer an opportunity for me to seek status here in this world, but they are an opportunity for me to minister the gospel, for me to be a, a, a lighthouse, a city set upon a hill in a community of people who I know need to hear the good news about this Jesus. Uh, Everything changes. My, my relationship with my kids is no longer about them affirming me as a good dad, but it's about me building something in their hearts that lasts into eternity. Me instilling a faith in them now at five and seven. That's how old my kids are, five and seven. Me instilling a faith in their hearts now at five and seven that will sustain them into their 50s and their 70s. Everything changes when I walk with the Holy Spirit because he opens my eyes to a heavenly, eternal reality that's so much greater than my present struggles. And so uh, it's foolish. Pastor Ed taught us this last week that it's foolish to live here and now as if eternity isn't knocking at the door. It's foolish for us to, to spend our lives and our resources for temporary comforts here and now in this itty bitty little part of the rope. If you remember his illustration from last week, it's foolish for us to spend our lives now as if there isn't eternity to be had just down the road, as if eternity isn't knocking at the door. When I walk in the Holy Spirit, he's empowering me. He's strengthening me to do what I was created to do, which is to glorify God in every aspect of my life and enjoy him forever. Uh, so, so, so I'm not letting go of anything that's good and anything that I am letting go of, he's actually giving me something better. So the things that I might have to let go of that made me happy, he's going to replace them with joy. And, and, and the happiness that I feel is fragile because, because happiness can be given to me, but it can also be taken away. But once I am walking in step with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit living in me, I will produce in my life joy that's unshakable and no one can take it. So I think it, I think it maybe throws some of us off to, well, first to be talking about the Holy Spirit. So, so the Holy Spirit is, is the person of the Trinity that we talk about the least. Uh, Dan and I were finding this as we were trying to figure out what songs that we would, that we would lead in worship this, mor or this morning for you all. Uh, and, and what we found is it's really hard to find songs about the Holy Spirit. There's tons of songs about the Father, tons of songs about the Son, not much about the Spirit. And I think that the Holy Spirit, for many of us, has kind of been the forgotten member of the Trinity. Uh, and so it may be uncomfortable for us to, to think about the Holy Spirit in terms that are personal, uh, because many of us have relegated the Holy Spirit to, to an impersonal force that, that's sent by the Father to do the Father's will. But rest assured that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is a person. Not only that he's a person, but that he is himself God. Uh, just as much as the Father is God, just as much as the Son is God, the person of the Holy Spirit is himself God, fully divine. And so, uh, unfortunately, we've, we've lost sight of that 
uh, in, in, in kind of the American church at large as we've talked so much about the Father and the Son, but today uh, we're, we're diving into the, the person of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and unfortunately, we, we've, we've probably talked about things that would pertain easily to the Spirit in, in ways that were just inaccurate. And so, so I, I don't want to disassemble anything, but I, but I want to kind of raise your attention to some things that maybe even you've said uh, that, that were biblically inaccurate that, that would have pertained to the Holy Spirit. And so, so just a question, how many of us have invited Jesus into our hearts, right? I know I have, I, I've prayed that prayer. Father, would you, Jesus, would you, would you fill my heart? Would you live in my heart with me? Would you come into my heart, be my savior, be my Lord? But the funny thing is the Bible's actually not gonna give us that language. See, James actually taught us just two weeks ago that Jesus is right now seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty in heaven, making intercession for us. He's interceding on our behalf. And so it's actually not God the Son, it's not Jesus who lives in your heart, but it's God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one sent from the Father to live in you, to walk with you daily. And, and so it's, it's funny because there are things that we'll say where we'll talk about Jesus, but really the person we're talking about is the Holy Spirit. And, and again, the Holy Spirit's not an it, he's, he's a he, he's a person. And so uh, the, the, the Bible's language about the Holy Spirit always points to him being personal always points to the Holy Spirit being a person. He's not an impersonal force that can be used and manipulated to our will. He is a person. And so just to kind of give you almost a scriptural rundown of what we can know about the person of the Holy Spirit, and this isn't exhaustive, but according to John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit teaches and reminds us of the things that Jesus has said. According to Acts 8, 29, he can speak. According to Acts 15, 28, he makes decisions. According to Ephesians 4, 30, he can be grieved. According to Hebrews 10, 29, he can be outraged. According to Acts 5, verses 3 and 4, he can be to. According to Acts 16, 6, and 7, he can forbid human plans. According to 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 and 11, he searches everything and comprehends the thoughts of God. According to 1 Corinthians 12, 11, he gives spiritual gifts to believers. According to Romans 8, 26 and 27, he helps us, intercedes for us. He has a mind. According to Romans 8, 16, he assures us of our adoption as children of God. According to John 15, 26, he bears witness to Christ. And according to John 16, 14, he glorifies Christ. He takes what is Christ's and he declares it to believers. So then the Holy Spirit is not a force, he's a person. And in his personality, he's all about Jesus. So when I walk with him, I start to be all about Jesus. And I start to become little by little more and more like Jesus. Skip Heitzig says this, when you see the Holy Spirit as a force, you'll say things like, I want more of the Holy Spirit. But when you see the Holy Spirit as a person, you'll say things like, I want the Holy Spirit to have more of me. See, the closer we walk with the Spirit, the greater peace we will feel in the flesh. I can say this with 100% certainty that if today we come away from this time of, of, of just proclamation of God's word and worship and we have a closer walk with the Spirit, I can say with 100% certainty you will not be free from anxiety, free from fear, free from guilt, and free from doubt. But I can say with 100% certainty that all of those things will begin to grow dim. Th th this is a process. This isn't a transaction. This isn't, I pray this prayer, you give me this peace, Spirit. This is a relationship. It's a process. And the Bible's going to speak of it in terms of fruit, right? That, that, it's, that it's the development of spiritual fruit in our lives. All I need to do is walk with the Spirit. And, and, and again, I'm not saying that all those things are going to go away. But what I am saying is that they will start to grow dim as the fruit of the Spirit grows and develops in our lives 
slowly but surely. We, we won't be fearless, but we will fear less. We, we won't be anxiety-less, but we will be anxious-less. And so, so the Bible teaches it this way in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. See, the thing about fruit is fruit is grown. F- fruit, fruit is grown. It's developed. And the first thing that takes place is, is, is that that seed needs to be planted and those roots need to grow down deep. And, and as this plant grows, it will begin to grow fruitful. But it takes time. It's, it's not an instantaneous thing. But you know what I know about fruit? Is it keeps coming back as the tree of your faith is planted and has these deep roots the the storms and weathering of the world around us will not be able to shake it because the roots go deep and even if that even if that tree right now might feel fruitless here's what i know as long as those roots are still deep in the ground that fruit will grow again and sometimes we need only be reminded that the Spirit is available to us even now, willing to walk with us, willing to dwell in us, live with us in the midst of all of this. And as I walk with the Spirit, I find that I've just got more peace in the flesh, more peace in the midst of struggle and in the midst of trial. When you live with the Holy Spirit daily, walk with the Holy Spirit daily, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you in certain ways. And so the Spirit is going to be used by God to to convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment, right? We read that in the text. The, The Spirit is going to refine our character and our behavior. The Spirit is going to lead us to read the Bible, The Spirit is going to lead us to pray. He's going to lead us away from self-reliance. And so so here's what I'm saying. If, If the Spirit that's leading you isn't leading you deep into study of your Bible, it's not the Holy Spirit leading you. Because the Holy Spirit is all about Jesus. He's going to point you over and over and over again to Jesus. So if the Spirit that's leading us isn't leading us to read the Bible and to pray, then that Spirit leading us is not the Holy Spirit. George Mueller says it this way, The Spirit and the Word must be combined. If I look to the Spirit alone without the Word, I lay myself open to great delusions also. If the Holy Spirit guides us at all, He will do it according to the Scriptures and never contrary to them. The Holy Spirit is all about Jesus. So as I walk with the Holy Spirit, I become all about Jesus, and slowly but surely, I become more and more like Jesus. The availability of the Holy Spirit to us as believers brings right to our front door this big truth that permeates every page of the Bible. One of the biggest Themes, one of the most consistent themes that we'll find in the Bible is God's desire to be with his people. From the Garden of Eden in Genesis, God was with his people. Uh, The Ark of the Covenant was God's throne. This was God with his people. The tabernacle in the wilderness was was God setting up camp with his people. Solomon's temple with the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant would, would stay. This was God with his people. The incarnation of the Son, Jesus, wrapping himself in flesh and becoming a man. This is God with us. We even say it. It's Emmanuel. God with us. And the the coming of the Holy Spirit. At the coming of the Holy Spirit, the the veil in the temple was torn. And now, this truly is the fullest expression thus far in human history of God with us. 
The Holy Spirit is just as available to you in your home right now as he is here in the church building with me now. God the Holy Spirit is not confined by space. The same Spirit that occupies you, that led you, the first time that you said from your heart of hearts that Jesus is Lord, that was the Holy Spirit giving you the ability to say that. And the same Spirit that gave you that ability gave it to me also and gives it freely to all who who would genuinely come to the Father. The closer we walk with the Spirit, the greater peace we will feel in the flesh and he is available he's not hiding from you the sending of the holy spirit is god's desire to live with us dwell in us walk with us to strengthen and empower us for today for tomorrow and into eternity it is by the spirit that he seals us as his children that he might bring us to himself We serve a God who desires to be so near to his people. He loves us, and in his love, he wants to walk beside us and live in us by the person of the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity. When we walk in the Spirit, we walk in a strength and a peace and a comfort that only God can can give. It is a walk of ever-increasing joy, ever-increasing peace, ever-increasing love as the fruit of the Spirit is developed in our lives as we walk with the Spirit daily. These aren't fleeting emotions. These aren't fragile like happiness is fragile. These are deep-rooted, abiding fruit of the Holy Spirit in my life and in your life. And as we walk with the Spirit, we can, we can walk in ever increasing peace in the midst of a crazy world. And it's not the case that we need it more today than we ever have before, but I suspect that coronavirus, COVID-19, has raised our awareness now more than ever that we need this peace. I suspect that a lot of the external comforts uh, that, that gave us a false sense of security have been stripped away from many of us. And with that gone, we, we feel vulnerable. And what I'm telling you today is that the Holy Spirit is not far. He's near. He's willing And he's eager to fill you, to walk with you, to seal you, to sanctify you. Slowly but surely, seeing the fruit of the Spirit grow and grow in your life, that you might walk in love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the offer on the table today. And we serve a good father. And and if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? I believe that if you are uncertain about whether or not you're filled with the Holy Spirit, whether or not you have this source of comfort and peace, I'm convinced that if you ask the father for that, that he will answer. But I don't want you to expect it to be like the flipping of a light switch. It's much more like the planting of a seed, a seed that needs to be cultivated and a seed that needs to be tended to and watered, but that in time, that seed will grow and it will produce fruit and you will never regret it. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit You desire to live in us and with us. You walk beside us. And and when you walk with us, Lord, we can walk in the midst of even a crazy world with a supernatural level of peace because the fruit of the Spirit is peace. Peace is not the absence of hardship, but it's your presence with us in the midst of hardship. And so we lift these prayers to you now. 
Father, I pray for every member of my family, my friends, everyone who's watching this, who might even right now be lifting a silent petition from their heart to you. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask that you would hear that prayer, that you would answer it, that even for me right here, right now, that you would fill me again with the Spirit, that you would clothe me, clothe us with power from on high, that we might walk in a type of supernatural confidence, comfort, peace, and joy in the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of COVID-19, and that it might serve as a witness to an unbelieving world, that there is a peace and a comfort that can be had in relationship with you. We don't want this transactionally, Father. We want you in us and with us and among us now and for the rest of our lives. I pray that you would do these things. Holy Spirit, fill us now. Would you do that? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, the Holy Spirit in us confirms and assures us that, that God is with us, and, and that is awesome news. Um, at this time, we have the opportunity to share together uh, in Holy Communion. And although uh, I love when we're here together as a family in God's house, doing it together, um, I, I've, I've actually heard from a couple of you guys, it's been a special moment for you to do it together with your family. And, and how we need this time to come together uh, and, and to partake in communion, to center our hearts and our minds on what Jesus did on the cross. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, it says this, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Later it says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all, all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The, the Bible says, he says it earlier uh, in, in the chapter that, that the same power that rose, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives in us. Let, let's allow the Holy Spirit as we partake in communion to remind us that, that God is with us, to remind us what Jesus did on the cross. The Bible says, God says, listen, if, if, if I did, if didn't I give you the greatest gift that I could? If, if, if I did not give you uh, my son to die on the cross, will I not give you all things? Will I not in this time give you a peace of mind? Will I not in this time uh, give you joy? Right? So let's be reminded through the Holy Spirit of what Jesus did on the cross for our sins during this time. The Bible says this, it says, for I receive from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, if you have an elements, you can take it at this time, he, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can partake of the bread at this time. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. 
the ticket at this time. It says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for the work that you're doing uh, among us, Lord. I, I thank you, Father, for the word uh, th this morning, Father, that that I, I believe that as, as we heard your word in our hearts, God, there, there was this desire in us, Father, to walk closely with the Holy Spirit. Father, that the Holy Spirit will, will remind us of, of God, the price that Jesus paid on the cross for us, that, that the Holy Spirit uh, will comfort us and, and be with us, Father. I pray that in these moments, God, even now, Lord, as, as we worship you, Father, I just pray that we will surrender ourselves to you and be led by the Holy Spirit. God, so many times we get in the way. So many times we allow things to get in the way. But I pray, God, that we will allow ourselves to be surrendered and walk closely with the Holy Spirit. Thank you uh, for the price that you paid on the cross, that, that we can have relationship with you, Jesus. And thank you for the work uh, that you're doing in us through the Holy Spirit. We love you. We trust you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Family, let that be our prayer uh, coming out of this service and into the rest of your week. Lord, have your way in me. And, and God makes his will for you clear in his word. His desire uh, is that you would be with him, that he would be with you. And by his Holy Spirit, God is available to walk with you, to live in you, to dwell with you, to give you his peace and his joy and his love, to be a comforter for you. In, in the midst of the world we live in, right now, I think, I think we feel that need more than we're used to feeling it, but that need is no greater today than it was six months ago. You need, I need, we need God the Holy Spirit living in us leading us, guiding us, conforming us to the image of Jesus, and sealing us for the day that God returns to call us his own. And so family, I'm so grateful that we got to spend this time together. This is why in the creed we confess, I believe in the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is God with us, God with you. He will be with you. He will walk with you. Uh, I want to just read to you quickly from uh, the book of Romans as we part ways. I've got uh, what is uh, what, what scholars believe to be one of Paul's benedictions here. This is Romans chapter 15, verse 13, just as we get ready to part ways. Uh, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. May the Holy Spirit dwell in you this week. May you feel the love and joy and peace and all of the fruit of the Spirit in your life that you may abound in hope. I love you. I can't wait to see you guys uh, later this week, hopefully, but if not, next Sunday. God bless you.